Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman, here once again with some more geography. Now, we're on to Montenegro. Montenegro. Uh, really don't know much at all. Like, I definitely recognize the name. I think it was... Uh, it was said in a previous country video, like, I know the country was brought up. The Baltics, right? Baltics? I th I'm pretty, yeah, 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 I think I heard that. <laughs> uh, never mind, because I don't really, I'm not 100% sure, so we're going to jump into it. <laughs> Before we do, please hit that like and subscribe button below. I want to get myself in trouble and not be a Baltic state, or country, I should say. And yeah, we're going to jump into it. Hope you guys are having an amazing day. Do, do, do. All right. Da, da. Come on, dude. Bought me an Ancestry, uh, you know, uh, what's it called? DNA test. So I'm waiting for that to get delivered so I can start on that thing. It'd be kind of cool to see where I'm from. All right, three, two, one. Well, I know where I'm from, but, you know, Ancestry, whatever. Anyways. Bam. Ah, it is so, so great, great to be back, back in the Balkans. Balkans. I, actually I actually love researching, researching this place because, because it's like, you'll never get bored. It's Europe's okay. most dysfunctional family. family. However, However when, when it comes, comes to Montenegro, Montenegro it's, it's kind of like... like... <laughs> Welcome to quite <laughs> possibly <laughs> the sleepiest <laughs> nation on the planet. What's wrong with that? It's time to learn geography. No! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbs. Montenegrin geography Bogdan wrote this joke about Montenegro. When all the countries were gaining independence from Yugoslavia in 1992, Montenegro was so lazy they took a 14 year long nap and finally caught up in 2006. <laughs> Jokes aside though, Montenegro is such an amazing hidden treasure locked away. That's true, like, they stayed part of the, you know, the, the Russia and for 14 years. Or was that, that, was that the joke? I don't know. I don't know, I, is that the joke? That they, I don't know. I'm just, I'm dumb. <laughs> Apparently, I didn't get it. Or did it actually take it that long? Like, or the just the joke is it? You know, if you know, seem I don't know. I don't know. Just forget I said anything right now, okay? Because <laughs> that made no sense to me. Way in the Balkans that very few people seem to pay attention to, probably because their publicity department is taking their lunch break. <laughs> anyway, let's find out where this little guy is located, shall we? By the way, uh, thank you to the person that sent me this Montenegro scarf. Love it. That's a cool scarf. Ah, uh, Montenegro, Europe's newest country. No, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Uh -uh. Yes, I no. am. Yes, we've uh -uh. done this a million times. Yes. Well, until that gets fully settled, we'll have to settle for Montenegro. You know how, like, when you're playing a video game, there's, like, a side mission or, like, a cool hidden level that you have to unlock? That's kind of like what Montenegro is. Europe's little bonus. And it's, like, the best place in the world to take a nap. First of all, the country is located in the southeastern okay. European region known as the Balkans, right along the Adriatic Sea, bordered by four other countries. Yes, the southernmost tip of Croatia borders them, which took off this extra five miles, eight kilometers of coastline. And depending on where you stand on the issue, they border the partially recognized disputed area of Kosovo that Serbia claims, and that's a whole other story for another episode. The country is divided into okay. 23 municipalities, two of which are urban centers, the former royal capital of Cetinje, and the current capital, Podgorica, located further inland. The country has two international airports, the busiest and largest one in the capital, Podgorica, as well as a smaller but conveniently located one in Tivat, along the Bay of Kotor, a huge tourism spot. Those who come in by sea can stop at one of the many marinas and seaports, with the largest and busiest one being the port of Bar in the south. South, which also operates cargo and passenger vessels daily. Finally, along the coast and inland, there are many small rocks and islets. However, the largest and main ones are Mamula Island, which has a fortress on it, guarding the entrance cool. to the Bay of Kotor, where you can find Stradioti Island with a small resort on it. And further south, you find St. Nicola Island, just off the coast of Budva. That island with the fortress on it, is that like a tourist attraction? Or, or is that like just, you know, just out there? It seems like a cool place for a tourist attraction. Can you actually visit it? Visit it? I'd love to do that. Anyways. Island with a small resort on it. And further south, you find St. Nicola Island, just off the coast of Budva. Finally, the triangle-shaped Boyana Island, just along the border with Albania, also has a nice beachside resort. Whew! Other than that, they do have two main state-operated railways that transect the country. It stops in the main hub, Podgorica, the capital, where you can decide to continue on either to Albania or Serbia. Oh, and the country is kind of shaped like a screaming turtle. Otherwise, <laughs> some interesting places to visit might include spots like the Mausoleum of Njegos, the Djurjevica Tara Bridge, 
village, the no. ruins of Duclea, this clock tower and the Millennium Bridge, the island what? of Saint Stefan, the Sipconic wine cellar, the fortification. The island of Saint. Hold on. Millennium Bridge, the island of Saint. Man, people get to live on that thing. That's pretty awesome, dude. Come on, like, that'd be awesome. Like, just do they have like their own community and they got a beach right down the road. That's awesome. I almost feel like it feels like 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 a big fortress of people living together. I don't know. I like to live there. Saint <laughs> Stefan, the Sipconic wine cellar, the fortifications of Kotor, the war memorial in Ulsin, the royal capital of Satinia has some cool stuff, and there are so many chapels and monasteries. The most notable one probably being the Ostrog monastery, carved into a cliff. It's like a huge pilgrimage spot. And speaking of crazy looking cliffs and fascinating natural landmarks, let's jump into the. That's cool. Now, the name Montenegro is derived from Venetian Italian, meaning Black Mountain, derived from the densely forested Mount Lofchen. Keep in mind, though, Montenegro is a Slavic nation, not Latin. They actually call their country Sornagora, which means Black Forest. The point is, there's lots of mountains and forests, and it looks great. I mean, Casino Royale was partially filmed there. Anyway, the country is over 80% mountainous and hilly, located in the geological region of Europe known as the Dinaric Alps, which... Man, a lot of, like, mountains, like... Because there's always like a debate, are you a mountain guy or a beach guy? Like I'd rather live in the mountains or, or around the mountains or like on the side of a mountain or, or something. I'm more of a mountain guy than a beach guy. So I just, yeah. I mean, I, I appreciate beaches and not, you know, get me wrong, I like going to beaches and stuff like that. But as like a living spot, I'd rather like live around the mountains and, and then go vacation like on a beach. Instead of the instead of the other way around, you know, I just think the mountains are just very pretty. It's just cool. I guess I, I like the cooler weather. I guess you know, I overheat too fast. Anyways. Back to the show. Percent mountainous and hilly, located in the geological region of Europe known as the Dinaric Alps, which extend all the way to Greece. Within these hills, there are two smaller ranges that shield the coastal regions, the Durmitor and Galasica Mountains. In between them, you find the longest river, the Tara, which flows south, not too far from the tallest peak, Zlakolata, which is also on the border with Albania. Just to skip away, you can find the largest lake, Lake Skadar, again shared with Albania, which is found at the edge of the Zeta Plain, the largest area of flat valley land in all of Montenegro, where, no shocker, the capital is located. Just to skip over the last mountains, with surprisingly beautiful beaches in the south, by Doni Stoi, close to the Albanian border, many of the beaches kind of stole names of famous beaches around the world to boost tourism, like Miami Beach or Copacabana. Further up north, Bulyarica Beach is one of the most popular areas. Sometimes you can even find flamingos there. Cool. And finally up north, you reach the most famous coastal region, the Bay of Kotor, uniquely shaped in these triple locked marinas with narrow corridors that played a huge role in the historical kingdom era. Ah, I love that name, KOTOR. It sounds like some kind of cartoon superhero from the 80s. And speaking of superheroes, <laughs> time for my triple shot of espresso break, which means Noah comes in and fills in for the physical geography Ooh, section. Back. You got it. Ow. The interesting thing for Montenegro is the number of species per area unit index over 0 0.8. This means it has the highest index recorded in any European country. Species like fish, amphibians, and brown bears. Out of the 526 species of European birds, it is believed that 333 of them can be regularly found in Montenegro. So yeah, bird watchers, book your flights. <laughs> Book. As mentioned, the country is loaded with many notable mountain and coastal landmarks. You have the Dormitor and the Blue Grotto Cave. They're just nice, peaceful places to get away from it all, you know, and take a nap. I call the 2,000-year-old olive tree thing. Economically speaking, they aren't really much of an agrarian or resource extraction-based society. Most of their essentials are actually imported. I mean, yes, they do have farms and export a little bit of metal, but ever since the early 2000s, they've been booming in the service, tourism, and foreign investment sectors. To this day, they have consistently placed multiple times at the top of the list of European countries with the largest foreign investment per capita, especially from Russian and British billionaires. So it's like they don't need wow. to farm, people just see potential in this place and pay to see it? Best job ever. And now food. Some of the top notable dishes you guys in Montenegrin geography have told us include things like kachamak, rashtan, niagushki, prosciutto, and cheese. And of course, like all the countries around them, they love a good shot of that pan balkan rakia. And speaking of go. culture they share... I wanna try a shot. Ooh, gotta love that Rakia. Thank you, Noah. Follow him on Instagram. You're welcome. I see you've upgraded to an adult 
beverage. Yeah, Jagger Fanatic does not endorse underage drinking. We are of age, though, so we can drink. Just a little disclaimer. Now, I asked a lot of you guys, the Montenegrin and Jagger peeps, how would you guys distinguish yourself apart from the rest of the Balkan cousins? Surprisingly, a lot of you kind of agreed on one thing. You all kind of proudly said something along the lines of, we are kind of known for being the sleepy, lazy people. I mean, they literally even have a lazy Olympics in the town of Brezna. You can win about 400 euros just for being the one that lays down and does nothing for the longest. Hmm. We should hang out sometime. No, but seriously, they also come from a- That's really cool. It's kind of like those, uh, those contests where, like, everyone puts their hand on a car, and the one that lasts the longest, the last one that, you know, to let go of the car, like, wins the car. And I guess that's kind of like the same thing there. That's, uh, that's cool. <laughs> Have, like, TVs in there, just check up, check in on the room, like, every couple hours to see uh, if everyone's still there. Three, two, one. Bang. He's down and does nothing for the longest. Hmm. We should hang out sometime. No, but seriously, they also come from a very strong background rooted in kingdoms that fought relentlessly against invaders too. Not everything is a siesta here. But anyway, the country has about 630,000 people and is the least populated Balkan nation. The country is multi-ethnic, made up of about 45% that identify as Montenegrins and about 29% Serbian. Whereas about 9% are Bosnian, 5% Albanian, and the rest are other groups, mostly Europeans and a few non-Europeans as well. Although they are not part of the EU, they do use the Euro as their currency, they use the type C and F plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now back to the Montenegrin Serbian thing. This is where things get a little tricky. Geography Savo said, there's a saying, Serbia and Montenegro are like two eyes in one head. Culturally speaking, they are pretty close, and often sometimes Montenegrins or Serbs in the country might interchangeably identify with the other group for whatever reason. So exact hmm. statistic and numbers on the populace is not always completely accurate. But in the end, unless they specify, do not call a Montenegrin a Serb. Basically with okay. Montenegro you see a little bit of Italian influence, kind of, I guess you could say. Historically speaking, the Renaissance contemporaries played a major role in influencing parts of the country. It was kind of like... Hey, you got some great beaches and landscape. Oh, well, thank you. But, you know, it could really use some sprucing up. Why don't I teach you some architecture techniques, maybe spice up your literature style, you know, just to polish up a few things? Uh, sure. Dude, what are you doing talking to that stranger? Oh, and I'm going to give you a name. And that's kind of how it happened. Their traditional <laughs> costumes are a little different, a little more colorful than their Serbian brothers and sisters. They also have their own folklore, national dances, like the Oro dance or eagle dance. Weddings are fun. Mm. Traditionally, couples will plant an olive tree together to symbolize unity. Like we huh. explained in the Bosnia and Herzegovina episode, basically all of these countries more or less can understand each other. There might be some small subtle accents or word switches, but let's not fool ourselves. They all pretty much get each other when they talk. It's like, hi. I'm speaking Australian. Hi, I'm speaking Alabama. Hello, I'm speaking <laughs> Belize. Oh, here bombs out the wind. What you be saying, lads and lass? What the hell? Now, the Montenegrin language can be written in both the Cyrillic and Latin alphabets. They have a few extra letters. However, I've been told that recently more people have been favoring the Latin one. Faith-wise, again, the nation is quite diverse, so you get people from multiple denominations, but the most predominant one adhered to being Eastern Orthodox. At least three quarters of the population claims to be a part of the church, and the second largest one being Islam at about 20%. In addition, Montenegro is known for being the second tallest country on earth after the Netherlands, which has like really helped them in men's water polo and women's handball championships. They do really really well in these sports. Anyway, we've been rambling on and on. History time, in the quickest way I can put it. Illyrians, Greeks, maybe Celts? Roman Empire collapses, blah, blah, blah. We've told you about this story a million times. Ancient Slavs come <laughs> in around the sixth century. Kingdom of Duclea. They tried to attack Constantinople, didn't really work out. Johann Vladimir, they switched their name to Zeta. Venetians come in and influence things for like three centuries. These dynasties, the Ottomans come in. Peter Petrovic Nyagos years. Russians come in and help with the fight against the Ottomans. The Treaty of Berlin, Balkan War, World War One, things got really messy. They joined the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats, and Slovenes, later called Yugoslavia. World War II, now they're part of the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. Civil War in the 90s, Yugoslavia breaks up. All that's left is Montenegro and Serbia. They finally gained full independence from Serbia in 2006. Okay. And here we are today. I asked you guys, the Montenegrin geography peeps, for a list of some notable people from Montenegro. Again, I was told it can be kind of hard because of the whole Serb-Montenegrin identity thing we talked about. But the people might include historical figure Ivan Cernovic, Bishop Peter I, Petrovic Njegos, King Nikola Petrovic, these football players, these NBA stars, these painters, this musician guy, Mima Karadzic, Mladen Nelovic, this comedy group, and finally, Dusan Vukotic. Ah, so many creative people. I mean, when you have all that time to chill and think, you know, no surprise. Now, let's just uh, finish up this episode with the last segment. I want to take a nap.
Montenegro. Montenegro is seriously like the most relaxed and chill former Yugoslav country. They don't really start any drama and all their neighbors, let alone visitors from all over the world, love to come and enjoy the tranquil forests and beaches. It's just how it is. First of all, the EU I has would. been getting more and more close over the years and currently Montenegro is a candidate to join with lots of outside support, especially Italy who has helped and influenced them greatly in the past. Russia is also very close. Montenegrins will never forget the role they played in assisting and protecting them from the Ottoman Empire. Nonetheless, they must have slept in and forgot the memo that joining NATO was totally something Russia would feel a little antsy about. Their inner circle, of course, would be the former Yugoslav states like Bosnia and Herzegovina and Croatia, to some extent, maybe even Slovenia. These countries are some of their biggest trading partners, and many Montenegrins have family in each nation. When it comes to their best friends, however, most Montenegrins will probably say Serbia. Despite the desire to clearly distinguish themselves apart, they are essentially blood brothers, two eyes and one head. Not only is business crucial between them, as Serbia likes to use Montenegro's ports as access to the Mediterranean, but many Montenegrins go to school in Serbia, marry Serbians, and have families with them. In conclusion, cool. hey, if your country went through over a thousand years of wars, dynasties, battles, political turmoil, chances are you'd probably want to take a nap too, okay? You deserve every last bit of that lazy stereotype Montenegro. Go ahead, knock yourself out. Stay tuned, Morocco is coming up next. That's cool, man. You guys got all that cool history, though. I mean, my country doesn't have all that cool history. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely... Now, the Balkan countries are really, are really cool and chill and interesting, you know? And I guess, you know, the laziest country, so if I want a vacation there, I can sleep in and no one's going to bug me and wake me up. Like, I bet you, like, the, the, uh, the checkout time was, like, probably in the afternoon, not the morning, because they expect people to sleep in. I don't know. I don't know. Let me guys know in the comments below if you're from there or have been there. I like the, I think the mountains are really cool and they have a beach. It's a small... Seems like a small country, so you can basically, basically chill on the beach, have fun there one day, and then the next day, go chill out in the mountains. That's something I would like to do. But anyways, guys, please hit that like and subscribe button below. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in future videos, doing every country in the world, alphabetical order. And who do they say? Morocco's next, and we're on to Morocco tomorrow. You guys have a great day, and yeah, peace. Catch you guys in future videos. You guys are awesome.